Hello everybody, my name is Link, here to talk about both new and old anime you might not have heard of. I recently finished watching Vatican Miracle Examiners, a 12 episode series from summer 2017. The story revolves around Hiraga Joseph Cole and Nicolas Roberto, the titular miracle examiners, as they're sent around the world to investigate claims of holy miracles like non-decomposing corpses, virgin birds, and etc. To verify if it's an actual miracle by the Lord, often finding complex conspiracies which puts themselves in danger in pursuit of the truth. As you might expect, the series is heavy with religious imagery, but it's a mystery anime to its core. And I think that's what makes this series actually bearable. Because, as an agnostic atheist who's from a heavily religious family, all too often is the idea of the holy shoved down my throat and I'm just expected to believe it without question. And that is one of the things that they cover in this show, albeit put into extremes. Letting us see examples of people taking religion too far and bending it to their own agenda. The show's core is to prove that anything that can't be explained at a glance isn't some holy miracle or God's divine will, and that people actually have to use their own judgment instead of just accepting as they're told. So, for our protagonists to be priests and their very job is to disprove a holy miracle or not sets up an interesting expectation flip for viewers who are expecting to be slapped in the face with blind faith. And it's so refreshing to have religion and belief viewed with an objective light. So I just want to make it clear that I don't think religion and belief are wrong, no matter which religion you follow. For many, it can be empowering, giving them strength to face difficult situations and challenges, and also make them strive to be the best person they can be. Being thought, empathy, and values for religion is what they should strive for, right? It's just when it becomes radical and the people who follow it start to forget the values they should follow and claim that they're right because they used to God's name is when people need to step back and reassess themselves. In fact, if anyone who is religion would watch this, I think they find it encouraging, as they would receive messages that they are loved and that their fate will be rewarded in a more wholesome and uplifting way. Or at least that's what I feel after being dismissively told that I'd go to hell if I don't pray without being educated on why. But that's just me. It didn't convert me or anything to make me join a covenant to be a nun. But I did understand what fate is to these characters, and felt touched when they were having their moments be rewarded for being good, upstanding citizens. So I count that as good storytelling. In the mystery department, it doesn't lack either. I'm someone who greatly enjoys mystery anime if they let me join the protagonist in solving the case. It feels engaging and lets us, the viewers, be more like a participant than just someone viewing these 2D characters' lives. And when done right, it can be completely gratifying, as you're putting the pieces together along with the heroes we're rooting for. A problem with most mystery anime, I think, is that sometimes you can just see right through any big twist they planned. Foreshadowing so heavy, you basically figure out who the killer is because they panned on the culprit's face for way too long. And while I don't deny there may have been some cases where I'd see for miracle examiner's antagonists, I would end up completely blindsided by the lengths the anime is willing to reach. Their case is larger than anyone would have expected first stepping in, and it kept me on my toes for whatever they could throw. A mystery anime that's more of the journey and the setup than the actual reveal, and the execution and the ideas they throw at you show that they know what they're doing with it. I was just sitting there mouth agape as they revealed every aspect of their first case, Mind blown at how they could have possibly come up with a setup this insane with all its tiny pieces and actually make it work. Their balls to do this made me instantly want more. Their tone is dark, and I think due to the premise being more or less realistic and modern, any brutal scene just hits a whole lot harder. I got desensitized to watching people get snapped in two and getting eaten in episode 1 of Attack on Titan but every murder and gruesome reveal they have is genuinely shocking and puzzling. Never losing its weight and gravity of the situation that there is danger around them. There are times when I even ask myself if the elements being shown were allowed on TV, never mind under the umbrella of a usually prude premise. One of my few gripes with this series is that there seems to be something supernatural going on, like physically going on with them. 
and it can be unclear if it's one of the overzealous believers' imaginations or we're actually witnessing a bona fide miracle. It can take a while for which reality to sink in, and when it does, it's usually over. As well as the show having some seemingly important characters just never being truly explored. And speaking of characters, boy do I enjoy the main two <laughs> chemistry. I'm not gonna spoil anything about the plot, of course, but I do want to cover Nicholas and Joseph's relationship and how it's shown for the story, so if you want to jump completely blind, then please skip to the time skip on the screen. I had a bit of a hunch from some of the shots in the opening alone, but it just gets better. Joseph's open admiration to Nicholas, Karen to a fault. Nicholas is the more silent one between them, but you can see that he trusts Joseph with his life. There was even a scene where his fate was being tested, and he denied all riches of the world unwaveringly. But seeing Joseph actually made his fate waver, and I screamed. And then there was Joseph's friend that's kind of the loner type, who's only close with that one particular person they like. And when brought up Joseph's partner, <laughs> he went on gushing about just how great Nicholas is about everything. And the friend made this face, and I nearly had unholy thoughts. A love triangle? In this anime? But it's okay because they never explore the friend too much. You can see in the ending that Nicholas cooks for Joseph in their would-be dates. And Joseph is absolutely loving it. Just look at this! Look at his adorable smile! So precious! And then just sitting on a sofa in a field of flowers overlooking a starry sky. By the end, they also talk to each other, either to give their thoughts on the case they have at the moment, or give a bit of a hint on what the next episode is about. You don't really miss anything if you skip them, aside from even more interaction. Especially if you're going to binge this, you don't need those previews. So, should you watch Vatican Miracle Examiners? I'll be rating the shows I cover here with D stars. One is, I suffer for this anime so you don't have to. Something else is worth their time. Three years. Definitely give it a go. It was an enjoyable ride despite its flaws, and or it could be covering certain niches you could be interested in. While five is just add it to your anime bible. A show any fan would definitely watch. I give Miracle Examiners a solid four stars. It's heavy use of Christianity agenda aside. The show is an absolute solid for any crime and mystery anime fan to try. One of the few good ones I've watched that genuinely caught me off guard. And it isn't afraid to get in the nitty gritty despite the modern trend of anything having religion on it should be pure and safe. So that's it. Have you guys watched Miracle Examiners? Are you planning to watch it? Please tell me down in the comments below. I'd love to hear you guys thoughts on it because I honestly feel like I'm the only one who watched it. If you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more lesser known anime you might not have heard of. See ya!